Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today you start our first episode in our IFR training course. But more importantly, we're going to take a look at the standard instrument departure procedures. So if you want to know more about departure procedures and how to read them, then I think you should stay tuned right here on 2020 Flight Simmers. All right, so let's take a deeper dive into the departure procedure plate that I have here before you. Oh, well, but before we do, if you are new to the channel, I would love to welcome you and highly suggest you go down below and hit that subscribe and tick that little bell. And if this video does help you out in any way, a big old thumbs up to the channel would be greatly appreciated. It also helps this video get found by viewers like yourself. While you're watching, if you have any questions along the way, please post those down below in the comments section and I will get back to you as soon as I can. All right, so now that we've got that out of the way, let's talk about the two main types of procedures that you may encounter. Now, the first one is gonna be the obstacle departure procedure. And the second one is gonna be the standard instrument departure procedure. Now, the obstacle departure procedure is pretty much there to help you navigate around any particular obstacle that you may encounter on your exit out of a particular airport. But the main one we're gonna be focusing on today is gonna to be your traditional standard instrument departure procedure. And we're gonna break this thing down from top to bottom, so hopefully by the end of this episode, you will have a better grasp on how to read these departure plates. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is at the very top and the very bottom of the departure procedure, and that is going to be the airport and ICAO information, as well as the particular procedure information. Now we need to go ahead and flip this thing on its side so that we can get a better view of it. And the first thing you're going to notice right at the top in big and bold is our first set of requirements. So to run this particular departure procedure, radar is required to the RBV Vortac. So right there, depending on the instrumentation that you're going to be running in your aircraft, you may or may not be able to fly this particular departure. The next thing that we're going to take a look at is in the very top left-hand corner of the departure procedure, and that is going to be all the different frequencies that we're going to be using along the way. So you have ATIS, clearance delivery, ground, tower, and departure. The next thing that we're gonna take a look at are all the different VORs that are on this procedure, and there are five of them. Now above each of these VORs is an information box. Information. That's gonna give all the details about the VOR. Now the first bit of information is gonna be the name of the VOR, and in this particular instance, this is the Robbinsville VOR. Under that, starting from left to right, is going to be the frequency for the VOR, and that is what you're gonna enter into the NAV1 or NAV2 radio of your aircraft. Next to that is going to be the waypoint information that you would enter into the GPS. So for this instance, if you wanna pull up the Robbinsville VOR, you would type in RBV into the GPS and it will pull that up for you. Next to that is gonna be your Morse code identifier for the frequency to verify that you have the correct VOR and frequency in your nav radio. So next we're gonna take a look at these lines coming out of the VORs with an R number associated with that. With that line and the R number is the radial that this line is on coming out of the VOR. So this particular line off of the coil VOR is on a radial of 046. Next, we're gonna take a look at some of the altitude restrictions along the departure route. So as you can see, if we look down here at the Dixie Waypoint, we have 3000 with a line underneath of that. That tells us that we need to be at or above 3,000 feet once we hit the Dixie Waypoint. Same goes for the Gamby Waypoint. Now with this one, we have a 6,000 with a line above and below that. Now that is telling us that we cannot be above or below 6,000 feet. We have to be right at 6,000 feet when we cross Gamby. 
Same with Manta. When we cross Manta, we need to be at 6,000 feet. No higher, no lower. So the next thing that we're going to take a look at is the airport location on the departure procedure. And you're going to notice that there is a VOR right on the runway. Now, the next thing you're going to notice around this airport are all these little teepees here. Now, we went over some of these in our VFR course. I will post a link down below for that if you have not seen that. There's a lot of good information on how to read a VFR chart. So these little TPs are ground obstacles that you need to keep in mind when you are departing the airport or entering the airport for that matter. And right next to those little TPs is going to have a number. Now that number is going to tell you the highest point of that ground obstacle. So in this particular case, the highest point in the ground obstacle here next to runway 06 is 456 feet. Next, we're gonna take a look at the heading information here and what is underneath of that. In between the parentheses is going to be a distance marker. So from Gamby to Manta, this is a 16 mile trek. Between Dixie and Gamby, this is a 15 mile trek. Combined is 31 miles on the entire leg. Same thing goes from Robbinsville to Dixie. This is a 16.4 mile leg. Now, the other thing you will notice on here is that there are some lines in bold and some lines are thinner than the bold one. Now, all of your bold lines that are on the departure procedure are the ones you are going to be flying. All of your thinner lines on that departure procedure are alternate routes that you could potentially take. Now, above the 122 track out of the Robbinsville VOR, you can also see that there is a little box above that that says it's the Victor 276 Airway. Same thing as once you get the Manta, if you were to take this route of 056, that would then put you on the Victor 139 or the Juliet 121 airway. Now, if we take a look up here at the Hampton VOR, you're going to also notice a radial of 236. So out of the Hampton VOR to the SHLEP waypoint, the total distance to that waypoint from the VOR is 19.2 miles. Now between Manta and Schlepp, hey, Schlepp rock. the total distance is 64 miles down here in parentheses under the 56. Now, if we come back over here and take a look at the airport information again, you can see all the different headings off of that VOR that you're going to be taking, depending on which runway you're going to be departing on. Now, this is going to be very helpful information if you're going to be using your nav radios to help guide you instead of the GPS. All right, everyone. So I think we are going to end the video here today. If anybody has any questions, please go ahead and post those down below in the comments section. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe and tick that little bell. And if this video did help you out in any way, smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. And to all my flight simmers around the world, keep the blue side up. We will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.